Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I am your host, Eric Smith, and today I am talking about Halloween and Satanism by Phil Phillips and Joan Hake Roby. I don't know how you would say her name. This is from Starburst Publishers. Buckle up, folks. Uh, so this is part of my Halloween reading list. When I made my video, this is one of the books I mentioned that I did not have yet, but had already ordered. So it was part of the list already. I just didn't have a physical copy to show in that video. But it arrived, and I read it, and it is insane. Um, all right, so this is about, this is a nonfiction book about saving yourself and your children from Satanism. On the back, it says, Warning, some material in this book is explicit. Parents may wish to review contents before it is read by children. First of all, I can't see a kid reading this. But I thought that that was going to be a little excessive. Till I read some of this. Well, till I read the whole thing. But yeah, there are some parts that I could, I could see shocking the, the average person. Uh, and then I want to share with you the introduction. So, it's very short. It's just one paragraph. If you question how the innocent celebration of Halloween can be coupled with Satanism, or you think these writers are unnecessarily alarmed, you need to read this book. It could save you or someone you love from the pitfalls of Satan. You need to know how horoscopes, the Ouija board, talismans, tea leaf reading, tarot cards, good luck charms, Dungeons and Dragons, and many other so-called fun things are really very deadly and should be avoided. If you already are involved with any of these or other devices of Satan, you need to know the truth. You need to learn how you can be set free. This book will enlighten you and lead you step by step into deliverance from any and all satanic control. Uh, so this book came out in 1987, I believe, and that was right in the middle of the satanic panic. I did a quick search, and from what I could tell, officially, the satanic panic started in 1980, and then it said it ended between 92 and 95 which would put 87 right in the middle. And so there were tons of books like this coming out. I have more of them. I have another one that's uh, co-written by these two, and then two more that are written just by him. And I love reading this stuff. I find it very funny. Uh, one, I'm an atheist. And two, I think it's crazy, overblown nonsense, for lack of a better word. Uh, so what they do in this book is, let's look at some of the chapters. Eh, this doesn't help. The Spirit of Fear, A Celebration of Death, The Strange and the Supernatural. Um, what they do is just cover a, a wide range of things that one might associate with Halloween. Some of, some of the things are absolutely associated with Halloween. Some, perhaps, tangentially. Now, uh, one of the reasons I very much wanted to be clear that this was published in 1987 is because I posted a picture of this, if I can find it. Um, there are some great pictures in here, although none of them, there are no credits. Okay. All right, first I, I have to show this one, just because <laughs> it's, it's awesome. So we have cat with upside down crucifix. Okay. Where did that picture come from? Did the authors just take a crucifix, place it down by the cat and take the picture? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Maybe I won't find what I was looking for. Um, but either way, uh, some of these little sections end with very... Ah, yes, there we go. 
You can be set free from the Ouija board. You can be set free from incantations. You can be set free from tarot cards. But, where is it? There it is. Okay. <laughs> you can be set free from necromancy. Now, 1987. I was uh, 20, 21, depending on uh, exactly when, what time of the year this book came out. I do not remember necromancy being a big thing in 1987. I don't think that was something anybody was worried about. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Yes, I remember Ouija boards and all these other, a lot of the other things I know about, you know, reading tea leaves and tarot cards. I have a set of tarot cards. Uh, um, I used to have a Ouija board. Um, but, whew, you got to be set free from all of this stuff. Uh, there are notations. There's a bibliography in the back of the book. But a lot of it is their own other books. And other sort. Now, there, there is the New York Times. But then you also have the Pentecostal Evangel. Uh, am I going to trust? I think that's the one that said, and again, this is in 1987, over 90 deaths attributed to playing Dungeons and Dragons. And then let's see, there's just right here, one, two, three, four, five instances of him citing his own book. Um, so I think, from what I can tell, so much of this, uh, they're using, the sources they're using, and I use sources loosely, are other religious books. Um, and as I said, there's no citation for any of the pictures that are in here. And they even go so far... Wait, is that... Where is it? There's There was a, a part where they had, like, bat in quotation marks. Like, like, a bat isn't a real thing. It was like, the bat is blah, blah, blah. Um, and they're pretty lazy. There's a ton of repetition in this book. They repeat themselves so much. And there's an entire chapter. I just happened to... The 12 Forbidden Practices. I don't know if they got lazy, if they were padding out the word count. This chapter has to be at least 75% verses from the Bible. So, just for example, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> this is how the chapter starts. The number one, enchantments, the act of influencing by charms and incantations the practice of magical arts. And then it lists one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine Bible verses, and then it quotes one, two, three, four, five of those. Just directly from the Bible. It doesn't say <coughs> which version of the Bible they're using. So the, the entire chapter is just that. These 12 forbidden practices, it tells you what it is, and then gives you a list of Bible verses, and then gives you a bunch of those Bible verses. Um, and then, oh, there was a part that I wanted to read because it was so... Um, just to show you how repetitive they were. Um, but I don't remember exactly where it is. There is a part in here where they pimp their own stuff. Let's, oh, there it is. Okay, so... <laughs> They're telling you the story of Rebecca. So it's a page, a little less, like slightly less than a page and a half, telling us about Rebecca. And then there's an asterisk, and at the bottom of the page it says, A complete account of Rebecca's experience is found in the book He Came to Set the Captives Free by Rebecca Brown. To order, send $9.95 plus $1.50 for shipping and handling, $2.50 if Canada or overseas, U.S. funds only, make check payable to, and mail to Starburst Publishers, P.O. Box, blah, 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 blah. 
Well, huh, that's them. Um, oh, what was the thing? I wish I could find it. Uh, let's see, Gnostic. So there's Aleister Crowley. Or Crowley. Depending. Oh, Casper. See? Casper the Friendly Ghost. Bad for you. Um, Jewish magic. That's bad stuff. Black magic. Oh, this is exciting. YouTubing right here as I look through this book. Um... All right, I, I I should have marked the page, but they're literally they're defining a word, and they just keep repeating different ways of saying the same thing over and over and over and over again, and then they do it again later in the chapter, or maybe in in a different chapter because things jump around. Anyway, <laughs> I told you this is gonna get crazy. Um, I did not give this a star rating on Goodreads. I just marked that I finished it. The reason for that is I would give it three out of five based on their scale. Three out of five means I liked it. The thing is, I didn't like it for the reasons the authors would want me to like it. I find this, excuse me, this stuff hilarious. The, the, they're so adamant and so scared. And some of the stories, some of the anecdotes they have are ridiculous. And some of the, and they actually have descriptions of satanic and Wiccan rituals. That's where the graphic content, the explicit content comes in. Um, so... Part of it reads like a, a how-to manual if you want to be satanic. Um, and then, <laughs> like so many of the things, some of the, the anecdotes and things that they state, you know, they're, they're stating this stuff as fact when it's simply something somebody said. I could say I rode to work today on a unicorn. Doesn't make it true. Um... Besides, unicorns are probably satanic somehow. I mean, they have a horn. Satan. Um, and then, what was... The, oh, one of their... One of the things they tell us comes from an L.A. intern. Internist. That's it. It's just... L.A. internist says... Actually, that would be easier to find. If I could find... There we go. D. Okay. Oh, is it here? I don't know. It's the D&D &D thing. D&D uh, &D responsible for over 90 deaths in young people. Um, eh, I thought it was the D&D &D part. <laughs> in my book, Turmoil in the Toy Box, I quote, blah, blah, blah. I have that book. I haven't read it yet. But, uh, yeah, and he lists all these different things that are in Dungeons and Dragons uh, and why they're satanic, you know, because it mentions demons and it mentions, he calls the, the dungeon master is basically is God and concerning death, concerning magic and spells. Some examples of blasphemy are found in quotes taken from the more than 20 books that teach one how to play Dungeons and Dragons. Um, craziness and he he does things like this statement fantasies in and of themselves serve a healthy function like relieving boredom objection the more we fantasize on something the more likely we are to bring that fantasy to reality through our actions this can be either good or bad i do know if i fantasize too much about that unicorn riding it to work that i could make that a reality i don't know if that'd be good or bad um, so, yeah, this is, I don't know how, nowadays, I understand back in 87 when people were panicking and thought there were satanic cults everywhere, I could see how some people would take this seriously. I don't see how that's possible nowadays. 
I think there are probably people that still would, but I find this stuff incredibly amusing. Uh, I love reading this kind of stuff. I've read a book. The whole book was just about Dungeons and Dragons and how it was destroying our youth. And it was satanic. I read one about Harry Potter and how that was turning our children to witchcraft and turning them into witches, pulling them away from God. Um, as I said, I have his Turmoil in the Toy Box. is about kids' toys, action figures and stuff, being satanic. Uh, Saturday Morning Mayhem is about cartoons, kids' cartoons, pulling children away from God, being satanic. Um, and then, what's the other one? Horror and Violence, I think, something like that, about um, movies, horror movies and action movies. Pulling our children away from God and turning them into Satanists. I love that kind of stuff. But for all the wrong reasons, uh, according to the authors. So, yeah, I have been, I told you, this was going to be crazy. Whew. I could talk about this all day. Halloween and Satanism. Um, I mean, I, there's so much more in here, I think. I've given you an idea of what it is, so you're going to have to decide for yourself if this is the kind of book you would be interested in reading. I recommend it if you have a mindset like mine. Although, you know, frankly, if you're worried about Satanism and keeping your kids on the straight and narrow, give this a read as well. Maybe you'll learn something. But uh, I'm recommending it for the comedy factor. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's see, I don't really have a question for this video, because I've gone on long enough about Halloween and Satanism by Phil Phillips and Joan Hake Ro Roby, however you say her name, I don't know, but there you have it, um, three out of five stars, very fun stuff, very repetitive, but just entertaining. All right. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put them in the comments below. I'd say comments are open for spoilers, but we're talking about nonfiction here. So, But if spoilers ever come up, just remember, post a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here at the Low Budget Review Show. Please like, share, and subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. If you'd care to follow me on other social media, my Twitter is at Ronan5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, is Eric Smith 5757 That's Eric with a K, E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H 5757. That's all I've got. This has been the Low Budget Review Show. I have been Eric Smith. And until next time, read more books.